Ladies and gentlemen, the new GeForce RTX 3070. Let me show it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, the new GeForce RTX 3070. Let me show it to you. It's a work of art. 20 shader teraflops, 40 RT teraflops, and 163 teraflops tensor core for AI processing. With eight gigabytes of G6, RTX 3070 is faster than the $1,200 RTX 2080 Ti, starting at 499 available in October. Every generation, we pack in our best ideas to increase performance while introducing new features that enhance image quality. Every couple of generations, the stars align, as it did with Pascal, and we get a giant generational leap. Pascal was known as the perfect 10. Pascal was a huge success and set a very high bar. It took the super family of Turing to meaningfully exceed Pascal on game performances without ray tracing. With ray tracing turned on, Pascal, using programmable shaders to compute ray triangle intersections, fell far behind Turing's RT core. And Turing with ray tracing on reached the same performance as Pascal with ray tracing off. On a technical basis, this was a huge achievement. The images are far more beautiful and reflection and shadow artifacts are gone. But gamers want it more. They want every generation to be more realistic and higher frame rate at the same time. So we double down on everything, twice the shader, twice the ray tracing, and twice the tensor core, the triple double. Ampere knocks the daylights out of Pascal on ray tracing. And even with ray tracing on, crushes Pascal on frame rate. To all my Pascal gamer friends, it is safe to up and GeForce RTX 3070 are all faster than the current frame rate king, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti opening the door to 4K60 gaming in today's titles and a host of next-generation games in the months and years to come. All three of these cards are also more powerful than either console from Sony or Microsoft. For many people who were considering making the jump to console, this fundamentally changes the equation. The big question now is to get a clearer picture of what these three cards are capable of and whether they're the right option for you. Let's take a look at the top 15 things you need to know about NVIDIA's new Ampere lineup before you buy. They are all very, very fast. At present, the only graphics card on the market that's capable of reliably running most games at 4K 60fps is the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, a $1,200 monster of a card. With NVIDIA's Ampere announcement, the lay of the land has fundamentally changed. NVIDIA promises that the GeForce RTX 3070 is faster than the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. This means that you can expect 2080 Ti levels of performance from a $499 card. The GeForce RTX 3070 is built on a different, smaller GPU, the GA104. GA104's capabilities are substantially toned down. The fully enabled version features 5,888 shader cores, a substantial drop from the GeForce RTX 3080, and 512 gigabytes per second of bandwidth due to its 256-bit memory bus. For all the advertising, what this basically means is that the GeForce RTX 3090 and RTX 3080 are more or less in one performance tier. We expect the RTX 3080 to substantially close the gap with overclocking. While, on the other hand, the GeForce RTX 3070 is in a lower performance tier, alongside the 2080 Ti. GeForce RTX 2080 Ti prices have crashed precipitously on the secondhand market. However, we still think this part makes a poor choice, considering the GeForce RTX 3070's $500 price point. On the other hand, we expect that you'll be able to snag touring cards like the GeForce RTX 2070 Super in the $200 to $300 range. If you're gaming at 1080p or 1440p, this represents immense value. You'll be able to run just about every AAA game at 4K 60fps with the GeForce RTX 3080. Yes, even Red Dead Redemption 2. 
The GeForce RTX 2080 Ti was the first card this generation to comfortably deliver a 4K 60fps experience in most titles. The GeForce GTX 1080 Ti did so as well, but games have gotten substantially more demanding since 2016. However, there are still a number of games that confound even the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti at 4K. This is where that 30-35% to performance boost from Ampere comes into the picture. Any game that runs in that 50 to 60 FPS range on the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, such as Red Dead Redemption 2, should comfortably hit 60 FPS on the new Ampere card. This means that you really will be able to crank those settings up and forget about tweaking them, at least until the next wave of 9th generation titles arrive. RTX IO can massively boost your load times and throughput, if you have a speedy SSD on hand. Both Microsoft and Sony have spent a lot of time talking about their high-speed bespoke SSD-based storage solutions for their 9th generation consoles. The PS5 in particular is supposed to deliver an effective bandwidth of nearly 9GB per second. This is double the nominal throughput of the SSD Microsoft's using, and it's thanks to a bespoke decompression solution. With RTX IO, NVIDIA aims to offer the same kind of experience to PC users. RTX IO enables Ampere cards to do decompression by themselves, taking the CPU out of the equation and potentially speeding up load time and LOD transitions by a factor of two. With next-gen titles expected to lean heavily on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X's storage capabilities, this should help Ampere gamers significantly. Aftermarket cards are on the way, and there are differences with the Founders Edition. NVIDIA's Ampere Founders Edition cards are things of beauty. However, at the end of the day, they are a reference design and it's always possible to get better performance from AIB cards. The suggested price points for Ampere are for NVIDIA's reference design. However, board partners like Zotac and Asus are working on custom AIB cards like the Zotac Amp Extreme GeForce RTX 3080 that promises faster performance and superior cooling. If you're willing to pony up a $50 to $100 price premium, those AIB cards should net you better performance. Be prepared for price hikes and limited availability. Thanks to Ampere's unprecedented gen-on-gen -gen performance gains, we expect reference cards plus all but the most premium AIB designs to sell out very quickly. This means that availability of all three Ampere cards is likely to be very limited after the first couple of days on sale. This could push prices up substantially. Infamously, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti had a suggested price of $999. However, a combination of low availability and price inertia meant that it sold for $1,200 for most of its lifetime. Be prepared for the prospect that Ampere cards might sell for substantially more than their recommended pricing. You might want to upgrade your power supply. Ampere cards are ferociously power-hungry. The GeForce RTX 3090 features an unprecedented 350 watts TBP, while the GeForce RTX 3080 sucks up 320 watts of power. To put this into perspective, that's just 25 watts less than the dual GPU NVIDIA Titan Z. This means that your current PSU might not be able to handle the two higher-end Ampere cards. If you're buying the GeForce RTX 3070, the 220 watt TDP should play nice with 550 watts and better PSUs. However, with the two higher end cards, we suggest getting yourself a 700 watt or better PSU. Yes, that's an additional investment and you'll want to factor that in for your total cost. Ampere features a new power connector design, but an adapter is included. NVIDIA is providing an adapter along with Ampere cards to convert your dual 8-pin outputs into its 12-pin. We expect PSU vendors to release new PSUs with 12-pin adapters in the months to come. However, as long as you have a 700-watt or faster modular PSU, you won't have to worry too much about compatibility. As mentioned, though, you should still consider a PSU upgrade to make sure you can actually run these cards. The GeForce RTX 3080 is faster than you think. NVIDIA typically differentiates card tiers with a substantial difference in performance. The GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, for instance, is 30 to 40% faster than the GeForce RTX 2080. No amount of overclocking is going to overcome that difference. 
However, and much like what we saw with the GeForce GTX 970 and GeForce GTX 980, the performance gap between the GeForce RTX 3080 and GeForce RTX 3090 is smaller than usual. There is a 20% deficit in terms of both shader core count and bandwidth, and yes, at stock that should translate into a 10 plus FPS differential. However, from what we know about Turing and Ampere clock speeds, both of these parts are good for 2 GHz plus on the core clock. This means that 10% gains are viable with the GeForce RTX 3080, narrowing that gap substantially. At stock, yes, there is a performance difference, but it's most certainly not worth two times the end.